Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at the expand function and a practical use of it when you combine it with say the vstack and sort functions. Now the expand function is one of the newer functions in Excel. It's a dynamic array function that was introduced and is only available in Microsoft 365. But before we jump into that, please take a minute to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the bell icon so you will get a notice whenever I put out a new video. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also find me at any of the social media sites you see here. So now, let's check out today's topic. So here's our scenario. I have four different groups of employees here from the marketing department, sales department, and advertising department, plus four new hires that I haven't determined what department they want to go into or their salary. And I want to combine these into one data range and sort them by, say, their last name. First thing, I'm going to copy the headers and I'm going to put them where I want that final list to be. And then I'm going to use the VStack function and I'm going to highlight each of the ranges, comma, this range here, comma, and this one. And I'll close the VStack function, hit enter, and you see it combines all these into one large data range. Now I could have used the vstack function to include the headers, but then that will become an issue when we go to sort. So that's why I just copied those headers into there. Now the last I want to add is this group of new employees. So I'm going to insert a comma and then the expand function. Now my array of the expand function are these four names here comma. Now how do I want to expand the rows? Well I don't. I want to still have four rows. So I can either type in a four or I could just type a comma and leave that section blank because I'm not expanding the rows. But the columns I do want to expand to four to match the columns of the other ranges. And lastly pad width. Now pad width allows me to enter any Thing that I want to include where there would be blank spaces. If I don't put anything there, I will get errors. So for example, if I leave that just like that, close my parentheses and hit enter, notice I get NAs or errors down there. However, if instead I put a comma, and then in quotes, I put TBD. Again, I have to put it in quotes if it's a text. If I just wanted to put a zero, then I could have excluded the quotes. I'll hit enter, and now it expanded those two columns to four and put to be determined in the empty cells. And here's my formula that I've used in cell L4. Now I can take those and sort that list, comma, and if I want to sort it by last name, that's column one. Close my parentheses, hit enter, and now I have a single list sorted by last name that combines all these together. Now if I wanted to sort those by salary in, say, descending order, I would change this to a four, because that's my fourth column, and then I could put in a minus one, which is the descending order argument for the sort function. Hit enter. Obviously, text always rises to the top, and the rest are in descending order. Now, the only other issue with combining this in this way is, for example, if you wanted to take Heidi Swanson and put her in the sales department, Notice you can't do that because this is a dynamic array function and by entering something manually, it interferes with the spill aspect of that. But what you can do is then take your data, convert it to its values and eliminate the formula. And by doing so, now you can make any of those changes that you need to. And that's how you can do this in Excel. So thanks for watching this video. 
If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so to any of the social networks you see here. Thanks a lot. Have a great day and happy excelling.